Howdy y'all. I think we need to revisit the injectors. So dad and I are gonna pull them out of here. We talked to a fellow in town that may be able to do something with them. On his way in today, dad got a piece of pipe here. Because of this wet stacking, we don't want that oil getting all over our freshly painted tractor or ourselves. So this will be just kind of a temporary fix to keep that stuff out away from the tractor. This way we can repaint our skid steer with oil. Let me get the injectors out of here. We're going to keep track of each one. Yoink, 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 yoink. We're boxing up all the injectors. We're taking a couple of extra ones that we have out of the real McCoy that are the two better ones that I have. That's the problem when you live out here, as far as I do in the country, everything's a long journey to town. Before we go, I'll check the water in the radiator, and yeah, that's a little bit of rust in there. I'll put rust inhibitor when we get the water in here, but you can see the top of the cores. It likes to ride about between a quarter inch and a half inch above the cores, but we haven't lost anything, so I think we're good. We are at a company called Alliant Power, and they are injector specialists, but these are the only ones that I've called that actually will mess with old mechanical injectors. So I'm back here with Bert, and he's got our in one of our injectors set up in here. This is the one off the other 7U, the real McCoy, and he's gonna do a little testing, see what we got. Yeah, you know, like you said, they're kind of just they're just squirting. Just a stream. There's not much of an atomization, so if we go to check the opening pressure. Just shy of 100 bar, which is going to be 1400 psi, 1450. Okay. And that's dry. That's that's allowable. So that that passed our leak test. That passed the leak test. Now, my rule of thumb is typically they're going to be working like this in the engine, right? But what what I what I did here was just just did that, and it's a low a low stroke, and you're you're expected that on these indirect injectors, so. I mean, typically when I was doing it, and the way I was taught by the old school guys back in the day, this is pretty allowable. Okay. And then the, I mean, the tell-all is going to be 10 bar before, and that's clean. It's clean. And this might just need a little bit of an adjustment. Okay. And get them consistent. Yeah. So, I mean, I think in my, in my book... So in your opinion, that's not a bad inject. No. And that's one of the ones out of the other tractor. Right, right. Okay. Well, this company, are they're nationwide or they're just out of Wisconsin? So we are, we are nationwide. Nationwide. But technically global. <laughs> but we but he's out of Wisconsin, so. Yes, I am the technical support manager and here in Denver I am going to be the site, on-site general manager. So um, I mean, my background is fuel ejection. That's why we're we're doing this today, and let's, let's diagnose it. I think we're in the right place. And that one actually sounds even better. And that's about 105 bar. So here's the tell-all. See right now, we're still dry, so we're good. No seeping injector, and I think that's where no, seep. no seeping on this one either. So, I mean, the seat's probably pretty healthy. Um, and that's a beautiful chatter on these indirects. So, that's a good one. That sounds really good. We had some pistons that we took out that had little dribbles in the top of the piston. Is that from a seeping injector then, or? It, yeah. I mean, that sounds pretty healthy too. Yeah. That's about 90 bar. So we'll do a leak test. A little bit, you know? A little sweat, but to be honest, 
That's allowable. It's even on the even on the uh, on the direct injected, you see that? You the engine won't notice it. It, it won't it'll be fine. Good, good. Especially on something this this vintage. This vintage. Yeah. <laughs> so that one had our original service kit in it. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. That's number two. That looks good. Ninety bar. Just by the sound of it, it's probably gonna be fine. Oh yeah. Yeah. No leak. This one's injector three. That's about 78, 80 bar. I round up. Okay. So it's the weakest of them so far. So far. That's and probably your problem, child. That's our that's our seeper. Yeah. Okay. That one is the concern. We're getting number four on there, and we're thinking this was our problem child. And they use a calibration fluid in this machine, so it's I'm guessing it's similar to diesel and very characteristically wise. Yes. Yeah. There's different viscosity levels that it's got to meet from factory, so that way when it goes on the engine. It almost seamlessly it mimics it, basically. Okay. I mean, each test bench is well calibrated the platforms, lines, injectors, all the specifics to mimic um, the engine performance so that when it's calibrated, it translates over. It's got a nice little pop, but it, you can just audibly, I can hear the, the sticking. Okay. And you can kind of see the, the spray pattern going like this and then just put it fizzles off to the side. Okay. So that, for me, is probably going to be a leaker. And this one's, yeah, and you can see the drop-off, too. If you notice the, yep, the giant drop-off, that's indication that it's not seating properly. So, we're at about 130. So, I verify it is 1,500 PSI is the bottom line. He says if you can, set them up at 16 on the high side if you can, the 1600. The kennel height is seven thousandths. So the good news is here on the test bench, out of the six, we have four good ones. Okay. But we have two problem childs that are the ones that we were trying to use before. Maybe you can look at that. See that stream right at the end? That's your wet cylinder right there. Okay. It should have, once it popped up, it should have went seated, no more leak. And Basically, they got a leaking spigot. Okay. Just dribbling raw diesel fuel. And That's our problem. I mean, it's leaking. You can tell. Oh, Shiny yeah. finger. Oh, yeah. What's the number on that one? This one is four. Four. So four and three were our problems here. I like was saying, you can tell right away these are healthy. And these two are the wet cylinders right here. We are on our way home, and I think we are a little happier than we were yesterday. Well, we're feeling better, let's put it that way. Yeah, and we left six injectors there. There was two that you guys saw that didn't test very well, but they may be fixable. I left all the service kits there that I had and everything, and we have at least four that are passable, that will work, that will run. And for any of you guys that are looking into these kind of projects, give them a call. They're nationwide. You can ship things to them. They, they will do these old mechanical injectors, Caterpillar, Deer, all kinds of stuff, and fuel pumps. They do a lot of fuel pump rebuilding. They were telling us about one that they built that they shipped in I think from Finland or somewhere in Europe it was an old World War II era vehicle that they managed to get that fuel pump going something that you can't get parts for so seriously 
I, I'd give these guys a call if you're working on any of that sort of stuff and you need it. Very nice folks took their time and really were patient with us. Yes, very much. And it's nice not to get laughed at when uh, you call somebody and tell them you're working on a 1939 Caterpillar. Well, when, you, when you bring something in that's 84 years old. Yeah, yeah. So these guys took it serious from the get-go and uh, they were actually a little bit excited to work on something of that vintage. It's very unique. And um, the gentleman that was helping us out that did all the testing, he learned and he was talking about things he learned from the old guys that used to work on those injectors back in the day. So um, worthwhile to check them out if you need some injector work done or testing. We got some really good news. Our injectors are done. Dad's got them right here on the bench. He picked them up this morning. But the really good news is we have six of them. So we have two spares that we can use in the future if we need to. Each one of these is individually packaged very nicely and they're numbered and they're labeled. And we have the corresponding results for each injector. Looks like number one measured at 96 bars, two at 100, three at 110, four at 115, five at 111 and six at 110. So the pressures are, looks like they range from 1392 up to 1667. So obviously we're gonna use the best four out of the group and keep the other two for spares. Looks like our best injectors are gonna be number three through six and that will have pressures between 1595 at the lowest and 1667 at the highest. And optimum for these is what, Dad? 15 to 1600 is so where you want them. We're right on the money in there. And what is our pintle gap that they worked them at? Uh, seven thousandths of an inch. Seven thousandths. Point so. zero zero seven. <laughs> this is a good day. We're gonna pull the hood off and get those injectors in this fender bending beast. I mean, it is living up to its name, Lefty. The left side seems to be okay. I checked our oils, nothing's changed. Let's put some injectors in and fire this thing up. I don't think it matters, but. So we're debating where to put our best injectors. So we have two that are really exceptional. And I know that the back of the engine gets the most heat. So I think I'll put the two really good ones up in the front where it cools a little better. I don't know, it's maybe I'm just we're overthinking this, probably overthinking it, but we'll put the best ones from the front to the back. Dad's going to write down which cylinder, which one's going into, so we can keep track, and I'll put them in. He's going to bring them over. This is the one marked number four. It's number four on their list. We're going to put it in the number one cylinder. It's the best injector of the group. This is our test injector number five. We're going to put it in cylinder two. Test number three, we're going to put it in cylinder number three. This is injector test number six. We're going to put it in cylinder four. All right, let me snug them down. Got a couple more little things we want to do, and then we're going to start it up. You want to do the honors, put the stack on here? This is our special wet stacking stack. Yeah, this is, this is the break-in stack.
So it sounds good. It's got a little pop. I got a little bit of a seep on one injector I need to fix up. No big deal. We have the wet stacking stop. Like there's virtually nothing in the stack anymore. It's pretty clean. Yeah, I'll prove it. At least it ain't coming out there. Yeah, so what we are getting here, that's that's residual from last time. But these tracks are still our problem here. So that's why we stopped where we did. And we've been trying to hit them so they come down. It's funny that they stick like this. It didn't really do that before, but they're only... I don't know, quarter inch away from the inside of those brackets on the fender. The bad place on this side is coming up. It's right there. And, uh, of course, it's not as critical over here because we don't have the fender on here at the moment. I think I can end this episode here for our fuel injectors. That's a very satisfactory result. I might have a couple of seeps that I need to tune up. It has a little bit of an intermittent pop. It might be a little bit of air getting in in a place or two. But we are very, very happy. It runs good, it idles good, it accelerates good. I think we're in a good place with the fuel system. We are going to address our track situation here because we can't run this around and break it in with these tracks. I do wanna thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Howdy y'all, 